Hi, welcome to Pography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I am going to go over some different ideas for creating a dark background in your artwork. Well, let's get started. Torch. The first method is using a torch. I'm using a metal mud knife to shield the lower edges. This type of knife is commonly used in drywall applications. The torch I'm using is a refillable torch and it costs around $20. It's okay, but it runs out of fuel very quickly. To get crisp edges using a torch requires the use of a fireproof shield of some sort. I am currently using a metal shield that Todd made me. If you are interested in how he made the shield, leave a comment. If there is enough interest, I'll create a video explaining it. This shield is large enough that the heat dissipates quickly, so I can hold it with my bare hands. It also helps that I use it for short amounts of time. The torch produces a dull, dark background, which I like, but it also produces a lot of carbon, as you can see from my Q-tip test. Torch Pros and Cons Let's start with the pros. It's much faster than using a pyography pen tip. It's fairly easy to get a uniform color. It looks like pyography. Now for the cons. You can't get a crisp line without a shield. It produces a lot of carbon. You must use a spray-on wood finish to avoid smearing that carbon around. Pyography. Next up is doing the background using traditional pyography methods, which means using a pyography pen tip. For this, use the pen tip of your preference. I like to use a large shader pen tip. The particular shader I am using is Colwood's E Spade Shader. Here are some tips for getting uniformly colored backgrounds. 1. Pull the pen tip down towards yourself. It is much easier to maintain a consistent hand speed and pressure when you burn in this direction. 2. Use a light hand pressure. This will help keep the heat level on your pen tip more consistent. And 3. Burn with the wood grain. My board has a horizontal grain. Rotating the board allows me to pull the pen tip down towards myself while burning with the grain direction. I am currently burning against the wood grain because I wanted to show you the difference in texture that the burn results produce. The problem I'm experiencing is that the pen tip tends to bounce, for lack of a better word, so I'm not getting as smooth of results. I have to reburn over the area to try and smooth out the burn strokes. Now I have not changed the heat setting on my burner and I'm using the same hand speed and hand pressure. Now keep in mind that the type of wood can impact the severity of this problem. I am burning on plywood, and that tends to be one of the worst for this issue. Look at how much smoother the upper burn strokes are. These were burned with the wood grain. The lower burn strokes are much rougher. They were burned against the grain. Angling the board even more makes it easier to see the texture difference between the two burn directions. Pyography Pros and Cons Starting with the pros, it looks like pyography. It is easy to get crisp lines and avoid the artwork. There's no carbon residue unless you're burning at a really high heat. You can use a spray-on or a brush-on finish. The cons. It can take a long time to do, especially if it's a large background. You can get uneven results depending on the wood type and the burn direction. Graphite Pencil I am using an 8B graphite pencil. It's from a very inexpensive set I bought on Amazon. Any pencil will work for this, including compressed graphite sticks which I'm using now, but I've placed a small section of it into a pencil holder 
to make it easier to use. Thick, heavy layers of graphite produce a silvery sheen, which you can see in this angled photo. As the Q-tip test shows, it's easy to smear the graphite. Graphite pencil, pros and cons. The pros. It's quick and easy to apply, and it's very easy to be precise. The cons. It doesn't look like pyography. It produces a reflective silver sheen. It smears easily, and you must use a spray-on finish. Charcoal. For this dark background idea, I am using a 2B charcoal pencil manufactured by Generals. Any brand of charcoal pencil will work for this. When I angle the board, you can see that the charcoal has a very matte finish to it. To get a smoother looking finish, just rub a blending stump over it. That will blend out the individual charcoal lines that you can see. Charcoal is very easy to smear. Derwent makes a set of tinted charcoal pencils so you can alter the color. They also have some large charcoal blocks and earth tones that would cover large backgrounds quickly. I haven't tried either product, so I can't say how good or bad they are. Charcoal pros and cons. The pros. They are fast, precise, and easy to apply. They produce dark matte results. You can blend them to get smoother results. They're easy to do gradient color, and there are different colors available. The cons. They smear very easily. You must use a spray-on wood finish, and it doesn't really look like pyography. Watercolor. I am using Winsor & Newton watercolors in the Cotman series for this test. I'm applying the color directly from the pan and trying to use as little water as possible. Despite my precautions, the color is still bleeding into the no color zone that I marked with a pencil. Supposedly, a dark line of pyography will block the color from bleeding. I'm using a writer pen tip to burn along the pencil lines. Then I resume applying the watercolor. The burn line definitely improved things, but it didn't block everything. Now, I will admit I'm not very good with a paintbrush, so it could be that I painted past the burn line, and that's why the color bled a little. Watercolor pros and cons. The pros. It's fast and easy to do. There are many colors available. You can alter the color opaqueness level. The cons. You must use a paintbrush. The color may not be light fast. You must use a spray-on finish. If the board hasn't been prepared properly, the grain will raise, making the board rough filling. Doesn't look like pyography. Acrylic paint. For this test, I am using a really cheap, no-name brand of acrylic paints. I'm not a painter, but even I can tell that my paint is a very low quality because it's not covering the board well. I'm using it straight from the bottle, but it reminds me of watered-down acrylics. Despite the low quality, it doesn't bleed. So in that aspect is good, I would just highly recommend using a good brand. I couldn't tell you which brand is good. The Q-tip remains clean after wiping it over the paint. Acrylic paint, pros and cons. Pros, it's fast and easy. The paint comes in a variety of colors. You can use a spray or brush on finish to seal the wood. The cons, you must use a paintbrush. Colors may not be light fast. It doesn't look like pyography. Markers. For this test, I am using permanent markers by Sharpie. The markers bleed, which I expected because it's a very water-based medium. I am burning a dark line around the no color zone to see if that will stop the bleeding. Then I used a fine tip marker to carefully color next to the line. The burned line reduced the amount of bleeding, but it didn't completely stop at all. I should point out 
that most markers use dye-based inks, so they are not light fast. The only pigment-based light fast marker I'm aware of is made by Winsor & Newton. They are not cheap. Surprisingly, there was a little color picked up from the Q-tip. Marker Pros and Cons Pros It's fast and easy to use. They come in a variety of colors. Cons Most markers are dye-based and are not light-fast. Light-fast pigment markers are expensive. They tend to bleed. You must use a spray-on finish. They can raise the grain on poorly prepped boards, leaving the board filling rough. Colored Pencil I've drawn a line in the middle of the board to split it in half. On the upper portion, I am using a Polychromos brand of colored pencil. To smooth out the color, I'm rubbing over it with a blending stump. The numerous white lines are the plywood texture showing through. Using a blending stump will help push the color down into those lines. Afterwards, I apply another layer of colored pencil to darken up the background a bit more. I'm only applying it to half of the upper portion so you can see the difference. On the lower portion of the board, I am using a Prismacolor brand of colored pencil. This is just to see how the two brands compare. Other than the change in the brand, I'm repeating the same process that I used on the upper portion. So I color it in, blend out half of the board, and then apply another layer of color. The Q-tip picks up some of the color. I forgot to test the Prisma color, but I know it will be the same way. Colored pencil, pros and cons. The pros, it's very precise. There are numerous colors available, and you can control the opaqueness level. The cons. It can take some time to smooth out and build up the color. The color may not be light fast. You must use a spray-on finish. It doesn't look like pyography. Airbrush To get ready for the airbrush, I've covered part of the board with frisket film. This is also known as masking film. Then I start spraying the upper portion of the board with a translucent black color manufactured by Calmart. The no color zone is partially covered with masking film. I did this to show you the difference between the resulting line crispness. On the bottom portion of the board, I am using an opaque black by Calmart. This is just to show you the difference between the two types of paint. As you can see, the opaque black produces a darker color than the translucent one. I'm removing the frisket film. Look at how blurry the edges are on the non-frisketed side of the no color zone. The Q-tip doesn't remove any color from this test panel. Airbrush pros and cons. The pros. You can get very smooth color. You can cover large areas quickly. The color dries almost instantly. There is a large variety of colors available. The cons. Crisp edges require masking, either using frisket or a shield. Frisket takes time to cut. Colors may not be light fast. You must use a spray-on finish. After every use, you must take apart your airbrush and thoroughly clean it. Pastel chalks. With this panel, I am using pastel chalks made by Carbfello. Pastel chalks are pastels that are blended with white chalk. This makes them behave more like charcoal. So they are powdery, but they blend very easily. Plus they have a flat matte finish. The Q-tip easily picked up some of the color. Chalk pastel pros and cons. The pros. It's fast, easy, and precise to use. Most of them have good light fast ratings. It has a matte finish. They come in an assortment of colors. The cons. They smear very easily. Not all colors are light fast. You must use a spray on finish. 
It doesn't look like pyography. Crayon. For this test panel, I am using a Crayola brand of crayon. I have found that heating up the crayon with an embossing gun blends the color and really helps it bond to the wood. Plus, it helps the second layer go on much smoother, probably because the board is still warm. I'm wiping a piece of clean paper towel over the crayon to remove some excess. As you can see, it smeared it, so probably not a good idea. I rubbed over the area with an eraser. That removes some of the crayon. An ink eraser would probably work better. With the Q-tip test, I have to wipe a couple times before it picks up any color. Crayon Pros and Cons The pros. They are fairly inexpensive. They are easy to use. There are many assorted colors available. The cons. The colors are not light fast. It's hard to keep a fine point on the crayons. You must use a spray-on finish. It doesn't look like pyography. And it can look waxy. Wood stain. On this last panel, I am using a wood stain by Varathane. I begin by thoroughly mixing the stain. Then I use a brush and apply the stain to the board. Almost immediately it starts bleeding. Stain is supposed to be left on for a few minutes and then wiped off. I didn't want to wipe it off because that would smear it over the no color zone. Instead I blotted it off. It didn't matter because I still made a mess of the board. The Q-tip did not remove any color. Wood stain, pros and cons. The pros. You can use a brush on or spray on finish. The cons. You must use a paintbrush. It bleeds. It stinks. It's messy to remove and difficult to avoid the artwork when removing. It takes several hours or longer to dry. Three days before, Todd had an idea. Hey, what you working on? Um, working on those metal patterns you wanted. Oh, cool. Hey, I'm starting to do that uh, video for the dark background, so that'll be perfect. Oh. Awesome. Thanks. I got an idea. Too wimpy. Oh yeah, that'll work. <laughs> oh man, that worked. Well, that's it for this tutorial episode. I hope you liked the information and found it informative. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Thank you for watching my video. Did you like the video and find the information helpful? If so, please subscribe. That would really help my channel. Well, thank you, and have a great day.